Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode, is it five, of the Monkey and Cobb movie, movie talk podcast. Uh, I am your host, Monkey, and I am joined again by Mr. E. Rich. E. Rich. E. Rich. Hell yeah. <laughs> Which means you have now eclipsed Cobb, and you have been on more episodes than Cobb of the Monkey and Cobb movie podcast. You did You've it. You've got to stop meeting like this, Monkey. I think I legally have to change the name of the show to the Monkey and e Rich podcast at this point. Yes, sweet, sweet residuals. <laughs> yep. But will people really click on a, on a show that has a different name? I don't know. It's a, it's a huge risk. And I might be losing literally pennies in ad revenue if I make this change. I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine if you keep the name. <laughs> keep the name. <laughs> I think it's funnier <laughs> if it keeps the name. <laughs> no, totally, totally. Anyway, what Oscar bait did we watch for this episode? Uh, something about something in the sky. The sun. Sunlight, sunlight, I think, is what it's called. Yeah, Wait, no, sunshine. No, no. That's it, sunshine. Wait, no. It's about black people and they're dark, so it must be the dark version. It's moonlight. Yeah, the dark, okay, the yeah. darkness of the sky. And yeah. Moonlight. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah makes that's sense. it. Now, we both saw this probably over three weeks ago, so we might be a little shaky on our memories of it, but I still think yeah. it's worth reviewing because it is a, a nominee for best picture so we might as well talk about this shit while it's relevant yeah yeah and i I just wanted to bring up like it's it's certainly a nominee and i'm kind of thinking it might win best picture really uh if only so they can dispel the hashtag oscar so black uh controversy or oscar so white it would oh oscar so white sorry if it was oscar so black there would be no problem (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah we, we yeah. would have no reason to change it, that it would be true yeah. diversity if it truly was too black yes monochromatic but uh yeah so uh it wouldn't surprise me if moonlight won best picture and then la la land won everything else what about casey affleck doesn't he get anything uh it doesn't look like he will oh <laughs> which well, it kills no, me but is there a yeah. lead actor in moonlight that can get it everybody is a supporting actor in this movie mm. right yeah, but that's why I'm saying La La Land will win it. And I don't think Ryan Gosling was better than Casey Affleck, but let's talk about Moonlight. I don't the reason think so why <laughs> I say they're all supporting actors is because this movie takes place in three different parts, uh, three different parts yep. of the main character's life. So we see him as a kid with a kid actor, then as a teenager when he's in high school, and then as an adult when he's a big, sexy gay boy with those big oh, muscles. Yeah. Holy shit. Hunka, so you hunka. can go ahead okay. and take the reins because you're more of a professional film connoisseur than me so go ahead and and take us on this journey this this ghetto journey into the world of moonlight who dreams i believe um oh yeah so uh moonlight is the story of a young black kid who uh is kind of an outcast faggot who said that (laughs) that's offensive that's 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 not correct that's how we meet the character that's how we meet the character is that he's being chased through the streets being called a faggot so that's why it's appropriate for me to say it yeah, yeah, you're you're kind of yeah. very initially thrown into what it's like to be like uh, this kid because he's being chased, and then he's kind of trapped in this. It must be like a, an abandoned crack house or something, which that's not a good place to be in. <laughs> no, I think just for simplicity's sake, since I don't remember the character's name, since he since he's a Chiron. black faggot, we can call him, let's call him a blaggot just to save blaggot? time. Okay, <laughs> Chiron the blaggot. <laughs> <laughs> e rich how dare you <laughs> yeah yeah i'm so glad my name isn't on this <laughs> Wait, your name's not e rich your first name not... isn't e and your last name's not rich yeah <laughs> i know it's, it's a it's a twist it's like if you were the first rapper growing up in the in- internet age you would call yourself e rich e money yeah <laughs> yeah Anyway, tell me more about this blaggin named what's his name? Aaron, Kron? Chiron, I Chiron. believe. Chiron. Which which that sounds Greek to me. It sounds like like the hero of a Greek tragedy or something would be named Chiron, but that's a that's a black name. But yeah, so Chiron is being What chased isn't a into, black name? Yeah. Uh, it can be anything <laughs> at this point. Talking about Look, this like moving emotional Oscar picture about like the struggles of black youth and I'm just yes. being as offensive as I can. Monkey, I I beg you, look at your keyboard. Any mm-hmm. of the symbols on this keyboard can be in a black person's name. <laughs> well, that's true. Any of the symbols. <laughs> Any of them, yeah. So, uh, so uh, young Chiron, uh, the blaggot, is being chased into... <laughs> wow, he's adapting a... to it, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
it, it gets easier. Um, yeah, <laughs> it gets better, as somebody should have told Sharon. But yeah, he's being chased into a oh god, like it's an abandoned crack house like a or crack something, den. and yeah, it, it's just a very lonely existence he's got. But he's found by uh, Marshala Ali, which I don't know if that's how you say his name, but this guy is incredible. Yeah, I Moving. hope you win supporting actor. Oh, definitely, definitely. This guy's great. Uh, you have Even though he's only uh, in the movie for like half an hour. You haven't seen uh, the Luke Cage Netflix series, have you? No, is he in that? Yeah, he's in that. He's the like villain through the first half of that, and he is oh, so shit. great. Like I, I knew him from that, and so seeing in this movie, I'm like, damn, it's this guy. He's so cool. And yeah, so he gets, Chiron, the black it gets taken in by <laughs> Marshala Ali. And he kind of just gives him kind of the more stable home that he needs. He gives like, him like a father figure because he's living, yeah, Chiron's yeah. living with his single mom and she's like addicted to what, crack or some shit. Mm-hmm. But like what I love about this movie is that they're, they're like, it's, it's very layered. So like, even though he is, it's like an Marshala Ali is the like male role model like that he needs in his life. He is actually a drug pusher. Who it's is, like an ogre. Yeah. Who is getting, <laughs> getting rich off of the very thing that's like killing and destroying his relationship with his mom. So like, that's a very cool angle to this movie, I think. And so there's yeah, a very good scene. I, I think him. any other movie would have had him be like a cop or like a social counselor or some shit. And then, nah, his father figures a drug dealer. That's fine. And like, you legitimately see like, I don't know. I don't want to get too uh, preachy on this podcast. You, you kind of see how growing up as someone like Chiron looking at uh Marshala Ali like positively as this guy who's got his life together who uh, uh just has a good life has a good home can can afford to take care of this other uh black person on the street like you kind of look up to that person and say whatever he does I should probably do and that kind of leads you into drugs into selling drugs into peddling it and I mean like it's kind of a vicious cycle there you kind of aspire to be a well-to-do person, but the kind of lifestyle and kind of like, I don't know, just the violence inherent in that system makes you a terrible person. But yeah, he doesn't seem that now bad I, I, when he's rescuing him. Yeah. I don't want to go through every plot point because it would take us like an hour. So are yeah. there any bullet points, like, you know, anything regarding the acting or the, the story or anything you want to hit? While we talk yeah, about this movie. Yeah, I think all the performances are great when... Uh, so I didn't know going into it that it would be uh, through three different time periods oh, of his okay. life. So, when so that it, was when probably shocking to you when he's suddenly yeah, a teenager. Exactly. When it transitioned to him being a teenager, I'm like, whoa, what, what the fuck's going on here? But yeah, I kind of got used to it. And then when he turned into like the man... like The big sexy actual, man. Big sexy hunka hunka. Uh, when yeah. He, when that happened, I was just like, wait a minute, that's not him, is it? Because there is such a visual transformation from this skinny black kid to the skinny black teenager. Yeah, he's about as scrawny as this me. this muscly, yeah, hunk of, like, black man. And it took me a little while to, like, figure out, oh, yeah, that is Chiron. Like, he's actually really grown up and kind of evolved into, like, I don't think he's comfortable in his own skin, but he can he can project confidence. He does, he does some time in jail, so I'm sure that... And the casting on this movie was pretty you. magical because all three of the actors who play Chiron look pretty similar. And on yeah. the main poster for the film, it's like one third of each of their faces. And like they even line up on the poster to look like the yeah, same they do. person. Yeah. It's crazy. I think I would have caught on by that poster. But yeah, <laughs> so just just that entire part of the movie is really investing uh, to me, seeing how this, this guy grows up. Uh, the performances are all great. Mashallah, Ali, uh, the three black people who play Chiron and then his mom too is really really good I think that's that's Naomi Harris who is uh Money Penny in the new Bond movies and oh, really the the uh the kind of voodoo witch woman from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies as well oh shit I did not recognize her yeah she is really good look out for her wherever she is all right, we've 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 praised this shit show enough, but now I want to talk about some of the problems I had. Okay. I agree. The act, There's three, four actors that were all really great. Um, the performances were good. My problem is that I just didn't care. You didn't I, care. 
It's yeah. just the whole final act when he's an adult and he goes to visit his old friend and they're in the restaurant and he's cooking him food. I just mm. I didn't give a fuck. It is yeah. I don't, that is probably my fault for not just caring about this character enough. But it's just like why do I care? He doesn't have any problems anymore. Now it's just kind of like accepting who he is. But it's mm-hmm. done in just like the most like I don't give a fuck sort of way. And it's probably just my fault for not caring about the struggles of of um, Blaggett's, but it's just come on. <laughs> I mean, you know, I think I think for me it works a lot on an emotional level because he's he's very much repressed and kind of struggling with who he really is and not being able to really broadcast that in any way. And then kind of the the reunion he's going to is kind of the one person who he did have a uh, sexual relationship with and was able to show who he really was with. And it's kind of the unsure. Like, have you ever met up with one of your friends from years and years ago, and you you're not really sure who they are now? You have all those memories of them when you were younger, but you're not sure that really translates. It's that kind of feeling. But then, and I've never had this. There's the added on identity of it, where you, are, as Chiron, you're a gay man who doesn't know how to really really live with that so there's all that baggage and i think the performances are great in this movie and i think you're right like i think the end end sequence does go on a little bit too long well now that i think about it i think my i think my problem with it was that in the first Mm -hmm. two acts when he's a kid and a teenager he's he's at the very bottom of the totem pole the whole world everything is against him Mm -hmm. and that's more of an interesting story to me but then yeah. in the final act, he's made it. He's the fucking pimp, mob boss, king. He's got the huge muscles. He has everything going for him. So mm-hmm. now that he's no doesn't have as much to struggle with, it's like, eh, well, whatever. He won. He's fine. Whatever. Mm-hmm. I liked but it better think, when he was... The whole world was against him. Mm-hmm. I think in some ways, though, like, the struggle is even more pronounced for him as a... Like, I don't know. I kind of feel like when you're a kid, you don't really have a fully formed identity. You don't really know who you are. And then like the added on saddling of being a gay person and, and a black person and especially in a black society. The two worst things you can not, be. I know, yeah. <laughs> in, a, in a gay black society, like as a gay black, black person in a society generally that does not look well upon that, like there's that struggle and then there's just who you are as a person who he was basically denied as and he had to take on a different kind of personality or different different kind of mask to keep his life going as it is and just kind of that struggle I like I, I kind of identify with that in a way that kind of got me through that section of the movie e- even if it wasn't my favorite part of the movie I think it was really well done it was really well performed and it, it's kind of meaningful to see him get something at the very end for himself. So real for quick, let's do an, an arbitrary, him. unnecessary ranking of the three acts of the movie in order yeah. of best to worst. What would your opinion be? Just for Marsha, Marshala Ali, like it's it's got to be one, two, three. Same with me. Same yeah. exact thing. <laughs> it's that rare movie that gets worse as it goes on. But not, I, yeah, not worse I, as I in it's unwatchable, worse, it's still I, good. I think maybe on repeat viewings or like kind of knowing who this person is in totality will kind of help that end part because like throughout most of the third part i was just confused that this was the same guy because you don't see him in prison you see him going away to prison and then when the third part starts he's he's now out of prison and kind of in his life i i was just at cognitive dissonance not knowing that that little kid or that teenager was now this like big muscle-bound guy so like i spent a lot of time confused (laughs) so is there anything you want to hit uh, before we jump into our recommendations, uh, whether or not we would recommend the movie? Um, not really. Just that it, it's a really good performance movie. It's a really good story movie. Like, I don't... Yeah. That, that's all I kind of want to say here. Once we get into recommendations, I can kind of go further. All right. Well, I guess I'll go first then. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, it's a fine movie. It's it's probably going to win Best Picture, as he Rich said. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, clearly there's <laughs> some merit to it. But if you, if you just aren't into... Like, there's kind of slower character pieces. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's sort of in the same vein as Manchester, where it's just focused on, like, one character and all, all the struggles of their life. But it, mm-hmm. it's also very different kind of in tone, I guess. Uh, there's not really much lighthearted stuff in this movie other than with yeah. Marshawn at the beginning, if that mm-hmm. name's Marshawn, right? Yeah. So I'd say if you 
If you see only one Oscar bait movie about black people, and it's this one, or Hidden Figures, I'd say probably go see this one. Mm. Oh, yeah, what I haven't about, seen Hidden what? Figures, but yeah. I don't like what I see about that. So, uh, Do you want to hear a funny story about how I accidentally saw Hidden Figures? Please do. Go so, ahead. I told this on the, the Digibro Let's Play show, but he hasn't uploaded it yet. Mm-hmm. So I went to, I was in North Carolina for a couple weeks, and mm-hmm. I wanted to get a haircut. And I remember mm-hmm. when I was driving to Cookout one day, which is a restaurant down there, I saw a – it just said a barber shop. And I was like, okay, I'll go get my motherfucking haircut. Yeah. So, so I open the door and walk in. Uh-oh. It's a completely black barber shop. <laughs> hey, man. And so, embrace it. Go in. No, but here's the thing. Suddenly – I have eight black faces, four barbers and four people getting their haircut, all looking at this little scrawny white boy who just walked in yeah. and has a look of fright on his face. He's terrified oh God, of what he just walked into. And now I'm faced with a choice, either come in and get my haircut or walk mm. out and seem like the biggest fucking racist in the world. So, of course, I walk in. I look at the wall. Here's here's a list of haircuts available up on the wall. Fucking, um, it says Afro. Fifteen dollars, mm-hmm. dreadlocks, twelve dollars, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm thinking, hmm, I don't think I could get a haircut here. Yeah. Uh, so I get I get set down in the chair, and the guy who's cutting my hair, like he he clearly knows that I'm not supposed to be here because he doesn't mm-hmm. seem like he wants to cut my hair. Because I mean, it's not a racist thing to say that black people and white people have very different hair. It's just a fact. Theirs yeah. is more coarse and rough, and ours is all weird and silky and gay. So he, he seemed very uncomfortable giving me a haircut, and it ended up being one of the worst haircuts I've ever gotten, but that's beside the point. The point I'm trying to make with the story is that up on the wall, they were playing movies on a big TV screen that all mm-hmm. the customers and everybody were watching, and obviously they're only playing black movies. When I walked in, they were watching one of the Medea movies, which was just nice. a delight. I was really excited Excellent. to get my haircut while watching Medea. But then after <laughs> Medea ends, the next movie starts... And it's Hidden Figures, that movie How? that at the time had only been in theaters for a week. Yeah. And I'm, think, I'm thinking, what, what the fuck? Do they just distribute this to all the black barbershops? What's going on? What the and then fuck? up on the screen, the text pops up, um, uh, do not redistribute, blah, blah, blah. This is a screener copy, et cetera. And I'm thinking, uh-oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I, I, obviously I know that they torrented this movie. Yeah, yeah, and now they're playing it in their barber shop while it's still in theaters across the street. And I asked the barber, uh, "So, what? How'd you guys get this movie? I thought it was in theaters." And he says, "Yeah, we got a way of getting these movies." <laughs> I was <laughs> like, "What the fuck?" That's so, yeah, awesome. That, that's how I got a, hair, a terrible haircut at a black barber shop, and I accidentally saw the first ten minutes of a torrented version of Hidden Figures. That's, so that's my the story. best way to see hidden figures, I believe. Yeah. So did you do your recommendations yet? I think it's your turn. No. Okay. So, yeah, I, I would recommend Moonlight to somebody who's interested in movies. Uh, and, like, primarily, like, if you're a black gay man, yeah, totally see this movie. <laughs> but, if, uh, you're, if you're 2% of the, the black population, go ahead yeah, and see it. Yeah. And 0.05% of the total population. But yeah. uh, So, like... I think if you're a black gay man, if you're interested in seeing the life of someone you don't normally see uh, over the course of movie making or over the course of your life, totally see this movie. And I think the movie is well made enough on its own uh, to be enjoyable to most people as long as they're not like inherently uh, fuck this shit like automatically. But yeah, I mean, I liked the movie. I think it's it's well made, uh, well acted, well directed. And well written, so I mean, yeah, it's definitely great. See it if you now, want. Now you if said you, you think you it, it. It, it will win it. best picture, but do you think it should? No, I, I, I personally wouldn't. When I came out of this movie, I really liked it, but I definitely said there are three or four movies that I saw that I really loved. Other than this, yeah. Well, does that wrap up Moonlight for us then? Should we move on to questions? I believe it does. Okay, so I posted on Twitter earlier today that we're going to record some sort of movie podcast, and that if anybody had movie questions to ask, that they should. And one of the first questions I got was from at Dog Violator. Mm. He wanted to know, why is your co-host such a fucking faggot? Now, mind Ooh. you, he didn't know what I was recording or who the <laughs> co-host would be. Yeah. So don't take it personally. Just answer the question. 
E. Rich, why are you such a fucking faggot? Why am I such a fucking faggot? Hmm, let's see. Or maybe see. you're a blackguard. We don't know if you're black or not. Maybe I you are. I take it from black men in the ass uh, <laughs> every other day. You're That's cucking reason, your boyfriend? Right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't think I'm a faggot. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe oh, okay. Dog Violator can uh, <laughs> inform me on how I am while also <laughs> telling me how to dog. Yep. Okay, yeah, here's, so a, here's a better question. It was, um, what was the first R-rated movie you saw as a kid? And the way I'm going to answer this is not the first R-rated movie I saw in general, because I don't remember, mm-hmm. but I do remember the first time I went to see an R-rated movie in theaters. But okay. if you want to go first, you can. Yeah, okay, I'll go first. Okay, so the first R-rated movie I saw in general, I would have to guess, would be Alien. Oh, okay. Uh, like it's kind of a classic movie to me, and it, like it doesn't really strike me as R-rated. Really, I guess there's enough blood, and they say fuck maybe. But yeah, I mean, Alien would be the first R-rated movie, and so I I was looking to see what R-rated movie I probably first saw in the theaters, and I found 300. But then I looked further, further back, and realized it was probably Borat. <laughs> oh, okay. My That's like life. 10 years old now, right? What's that? So how old would you have been? Uh, 13 or 14, probably. Mm. And your parents took you to see that? My dad did, yeah. Hey, that's a... I mean, Borat's a pretty good first time to... Absolutely. You're a little kid in the theater and you see a really fat, short man's naked ass in, in yeah, Borat's face. That's pretty good. Sasha Baron Cohen, absolutely. <laughs> I, I truly love Borat. I can't recommend it enough. It's probably in my top 10 favorite comedies of all time. Absolutely. There's nothing like um, that shock of seeing Sasha Baron Cohen yeah. walk around and talk to people like that. It's great. Yeah, and uh, then after the movie, he kept getting sued by all those groups who he tricked into <laughs> doing an interview. Uh, unfortunately, I I think I can beat that one because... Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me paint a picture for you. It's September of 2006. Little Monkey is 11 years old, just turned 11 a few months earlier. And and his younger brother, Patchy, at this time, is eight. <laughs> now, Monkey's, Monkey's parents weren't the smartest parents. Yeah. They thought, oh, this movie looks pretty good. Let's just take the whole family. Let's not do any research. Let's just take our eight-year-old son, Patchy, in to see this R-rated movie. Now, I'm going to see if you can guess what the movie was. Okay. Uh, the reason why my parents wanted to see it was because the tagline of the movie was, it's like speed without the bus. Uh, catch that kid. Not R rated, but <laughs> that's like not R rated. Speed without a bus. Yeah. Uh, I'm not getting. Want me to tell you the actor? Movie. Yeah, no, I'll give you the actor. actor, Jason Statham. Oh shit, crank. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, it, no, it was a nightmare. Um, so about. Five minutes into the movie, the word fuck has been said 30 times, no doubt. And my parents are are getting traumatized because they think they're traumatizing Patchy and I. So (laughs) we actually get up and leave that theater because Mm -hmm. they were so embarrassed and they didn't want us to see that movie. But we're not going to leave the entire movie theater uh, because, I mean, we paid for our tickets. We're going to go see something else. So we talked to the attendant and they said, oh, yeah, you can go see one of these movies. It just started. And E. Rich... This was a blessing in dis- in disguise because okay. while Crank is a phenomenal movie, it's hilarious and lots of fun, there mm-hmm. was a better movie that was in theaters in September of 2006. Tell me. And this movie was not R-rated. Now, do you have any idea what this movie could be? Not R-rated. G- give, me, give me another actor. Nicolas Cage. Oh, shit. Is it Ghost Rider? No. No? Uh, 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 oh, God. The... the, the... Is the remake of the Christopher Lee movie, uh... The Wicker Man! The Wicker Man! Fuck yeah! yes! <laughs> oh my god, it was the greatest thing ever. I fucking love The Wicker Man. Oh man, so, yeah, my parents took us to go see Crank. We left because it was too violent and too many F-words. And then we walked into fucking Wicker Man, and it was the most glorious experience I'd had in a theater up to that point. What a yeah. beautiful movie. 
Oh my god. That's Nicholas incredible. Cage was in a bear suit and he punched a woman in the face. It was amazing. Was maybe the best thing. Maybe the best thing ever. It was the greatest. So that's my R-rated movie story. And uh, those are the two movie related questions we're reading today. So I guess uh, thanks for tuning in for probably the longest episode of this podcast yet. Maybe we'll try to keep it sorted next time. But now yeah. that we're adding in questions, who cares if it's longer? Um, anything yeah. you want to add before we sign off, E. Rich? Nope, that's it. All righty. Well, for Mumkey and Cobb's movie podcast, I've been Mumkey. And I've been E. Rich. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.